Hi everyone, but welcome back out here to the uh, Sydney Fine Arts Center. We're going to be looking at a little bit of Aldris today. I uh, did a painting. I did this one yesterday, um, which I I really loved. I, I filmed it for an online class, and it's up in the classroom now. And uh, I just so enjoyed painting the Aldris flowers. This looks like oils. This looks like it's blended, but it's not. It's acrylic. It's a new acrylic techniques. I use brand new acrylic techniques with it. I don't even use, uh, on that particular one, I didn't even use the extenders or anything to give you blending. I don't do any blending at all. It's a tonal painting. Um, Valdris is, uh, those of you that are interested in it, it is a uh, historical uh, Norwegian rosemaline style. Rosemaline, the painting of florals, decorative painting style. And it's one that I've been painting for over 35 years. I absolutely love it. But I love to put a more contemporary look to it. You know, I've painted it so many different in, in different ways, and over the years I've watched different artists, you know, put in different looks and different things. You know, like in the 80s, we were so mechanically blending of it and everything, and now we're away from that. Today, contemporary artists put in more calligraphy, more brushwork, more colors, more power to it, and I like to add that to, to the Valdris. I don't have a ton of samples out here because Valdris sells really well for me. I'll show you a couple of, of paintings that I have done here uh, with Valdris. So I just that, did that one tray there yesterday. This is another one that I did that I sold. Um, and another look, uh, you know, more contemporary, different colors. You know, definitely not, to, uh, you know, what we call historical Norwegian rosemaline colors. Uh, this one I just did this year, just a, a few months ago, and uh, it was sold and sent off to Japan. I love that tray, bigger tray, and, and the colors. And so Baldris is a, bar a flower Baroque style based mostly on the flowers, but it does have some scrolls. So I have absolutely no idea. Let me just sit down, you know, idea what I'm going to do here. Let's sit down and I'll show you how I build a Baldris design. And if you're interested in these types of lessons, and learning different types of pathways for color, for brush calligraphy, for design, come join us over in our online classes because that's where we're talking about it and doing it. And that's where I teach you how to design and draw it at the same time. So basically, Valdris is a flower broke, which means I'm going to concentrate on the flowers. Let's take a board. This is a board that is just base coated. You know, I like to use the um, MDF boards and tempered. This is a tempered board, the tempered uh, which means it contains a little bit of oil in it to give it a more of an archival quality. But when you use the base coats like this, you don't have to worry about that. But let's just uh, start out with, uh, you know, the flower baroque. What is do, what do I mean by the flower baroque? Now, the flower baroque means that the flowers have more powerful than the, than the scrolls. And so usually what I'll do is I'll sit there and I'll put a little circle, sometimes ovals, stuff if I want to open. Let me, in fact, let's just open this flower up a bit more. I never draw a flower larger than my fist, especially if it's a stroke flower like the Valdris are, because that makes it too hard to stroke and um, for you to get a nice stroke look into it. So let's just open that one up a little bit more. Let's put more of a rounding one maybe right here. And then and I always will put like the center out here, which will give me my direction here of which way I want them to point. I don't like them to point the same way because it's too much power in one way. Maybe I'll put some larger uh, flower units up here to help turn it so I'll, I'll turn flowers with ovals and circles and stuff and and uh, you know in the in the classes we go into a lot more information on that I'm going to anchor this with with the big acanthus scroll let's pull one down I'm going to make it longer because my board is more of a is a rectangle long rectangle here so we'll draw the acanthus out maybe give it another little bump of an acanthus leaf we'll take this is called the C Let's draw it right out into the S to get that drop, that dropping down look down to here like that. Tulips are also a great Valdris uh, flower, so let's put in an idea of a tulip, maybe one on either side over here. And so what I do is I look for flower shapes to fill up forms and areas that that I have or where I'm going to turn something. So maybe I'll, I don't want to fill up too close to the edge because maybe I'll put a colored band or border or something out here. We'll look at that later on in the painting. And um, then I'll start to fill in some, some flowers, and smaller little flowers, the Edelweiss flowers, smaller little ones, and around that fill up the composition. And 
that's what these little guys do. They just fill up the composition. So I'll set the gaze of my main flowers and then, uh, and then it, which matches, you know, taking them off in some different directions here. And then I'll go from there. And I'm going to build this scroll a little bit more this time than I have, um, you know, uh, than I have in some of the other ones. So we'll build it a little bit more, a little bit different. But let's go into... Um, Let's start deciding colors and stuff like that. My tr my uh, palette that I like to use, this is the Heritage um, colors and stuff that I like to use. I use them pure acrylic. I just squirt them all out here like this. This is the Hansa Yellow that I'm using here. Yellow Oxide, Burnt Sienna, Naphthol Red Light, Pine Green, Thalo Blue. My uh, real cool color, my Quinacridone Violet, my Red Violet, and my Titanium White. Um, brushes when I'm doing the Valdra stroke flowers I love to to use the and you can see uh, some of my most favorite one this one this right here has all the color on the handle uh, this is an, a 10 filbert this is an 8 filbert uh, sometimes I have a smaller flat out because I do like that one sometimes I use a synthetic pointed round for detail work and uh, this is my three-quarter inch um, fusion flat which I like to use for a lot of my uh, backgrounding work okay so what I'm going to do first is just break up some color and stuff into the background and this actually starts my movement now what I decide is which one of these flowers do I want to dominate the, the composition now in Valdris you don't always have that you can have two dominate the composition but in a lot of contemporary work when uh, I do contemporary flowers and stuff like, you know, some of the ones that you see back behind here, there is more, is a contemporary rose pattern that I'm putting up there. I like one flower to dominate and then soften out to the other. So, you know, this is a, a look that I have yet to explore in Valdris. There's a lot of different looks or the real movement of the real power of, of lines and, and linear movements to combine with the scroll movement. So there's a lot of different things we can explore. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of water and uh, let's kind of decide a color and stuff to go through. I, I really enjoy the uh, the burnt sienna, sometimes burnt sienna and a little bit of blue. And let's take a little bit of light color here. Let's make kind of a let's make kind of a gray today, a kind of a grayish color, a blue grayish color. Uh, and we might even cool that with just a touch of violet in it here, and we'll lighten that up. That's, that's kind of a pretty color. Now you can put some extender. I just put some extender into it. This is extender right here, not to blend or anything like that. I'm just going to keep this puddle wet for a second while I. Uh, while I streak this through. So this is my main power movement here. This rose is going to control that. And my board, though, has the scroll and stuff pulling down. So I would either, if you know, if I'm looking to, to do a contemporary look, I'd either put the power movement here so that it crosses the main rose, or I would put it up and down. And if you don't know, then go both ways, just like I'm just doing here. So I'll, I'll put a main power, like a paint power movement right here. And I just want to break up the background here a bit with some of this pretty color here. And, you know, you don't do it so much that you won't see your sketch if you need that. If you do need it, then just wipe it down with a paper towel just a bit so you can see some of that movement through. Maybe soften the edge. Sometimes I'll come off here to the side you know, I, I love the coolness and the power of a of a color. So if I have a blue flower, I will think about maybe putting some streaks of a color that's out here that's, you know, very contemporary look out here like this. A streak or so of that color maybe pulled through some right down in through here that will carry a different look to the, uh, to the painting. Um, so... You know, if I put blue flowers out through here, this is really kind of a great area because I can use the background to carry the color of the flowers, move colors through. Um, and that's just another consideration that you can have. There's a lot of different ways, different things that you can explore with these styles that are kind of fun. So I'll just put a few color marks. I call this the color marks, the calligraphy of that coming through. Now we'll come in. We'll grab our brush here. And first thing I'm going to do is just set some contrast into my center of interest where I can work some darker color. I'm going to take a little burnt sienna, a little pine green, 
and a little bit of red violet to cool it down. Now this is just, this is contrast right now. So I'll come right into this area, right in between my roses here. Now this is something you don't do with historical, you know, the Balvis painters of old did not do this because they worked, they would do what's called lacerine onto a background or putting some, you know, some glazes or something like that, but they definitely wouldn't do something like this. Uh, this is a more contemporary look that you find a lot of your representational painters today do and it's something that I like to do. Uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes I keep it soft, sometimes I really got to power on some color, and I like that, okay? So we'll put this in like this, here, and uh, drop that in. And, you know, I love uh, when, I, when I work, so I'm going to have some blue flowers that's going to carry our blue. We might add some other colors in there. This gives us a nice contrasting center. Your eye comes right into here in a nice area for us to build some of our, uh, our flowers off of. Let's come in and decide on our flowers. Now, I love the white flowers. That white flowers in Balvis is one of my prettiest flowers that I like to paint. And so I can just take all of these colors, as long as I know they're tertiary, which, you know, if I have red and green anywhere in here, which is, or the violets or any of that in here, um, this is all going to be tertiary, and that makes all beautiful grays. So this becomes a beautiful color to start. I can look at it, and this becomes a beautiful color here to start any of my flowers. Now, getting just a bit of glare there off the lights tonight, and uh, I can change that with just a little bit of green and make it more of a, uh, a softer gray, gray-green. I, if I'm painting a white flower... I don't like to, to lean as much to the red as I do the green. I like the green colors underneath. So I'm going to just casually base in here uh, some, of my, some of my white flowers, the area of my white flowers. And we might have a white band on this flower, down, this rose down here. And, uh, you know, the, the body of the rose might be different. Like if I was going to paint like one of the, a rose that's, going to be like this one with the white skirt and then the bowl of the rose being red. Red or yellows. And a yellow might be a pretty one. Let's do a yellow one up here tonight. So let's just take some yellow oxide and push some yellow oxide in here. Like that. And so that'll help us with that. We'll have reds. Let's take a little bit of our cool red, our quinacridone, and a little bit of our naphthol red light. And let's just toss in, just real casual here right now, what would be a couple of tulips out here. This, these will completely, totally change. I just want to push some color in. And I, you know, when you're going to paint, you know, Valdris, casual, you know, like I'm going to be doing here, casual, the uh, last thing I want to do is put anything in perfect right now. I want to keep it casual, keep my brush moving and moving and moving, okay? So let's take a little bit of that red, though. Let's toss some here into our white rose. We could uh, toss a little bit of green and stuff into that and give us a, a bit more of a translucent look to our petals. Uh, maybe up towards the warm side, the light side, we can even put a little bit of yellow, which is a good thing to add because immediately you see the harmony between the two yellow flowers there. Let's take some cooler cooler red violet or the, the quinacridone violet here and let's push in the center here I'm going to push and go around and I'm going to lift the pressure on my brush lift the pressure on my brush and just let it just kind of drag around like this now I'm painting with acrylics and that's a little sticky which is why I like it and then I'll just take my finger and I'll just blur it off a bit here just like that and I'm going to come right down here to the low side and I'm just going to push in some of that quinacridone here to uh, get a, a, a cooler shadow. Now, there's a lot of... I'm just going to add a little water here for a second. Let me just say, there's a lot of you that write into the comments and stuff, well, I can't do it with these acrylics. Well, not... Let me just say this right now. Not all acrylics are the same, okay? They're completely, totally different. And... Different types of acrylics are, are formulated to do different types of things in, in the art, you know, in, the, in the, the world of art. Our acrylics are formulated to push. It's called shear. 
the whole thing is called the shear of the paint. Ours are designed to push, so they don't pull holes and they don't roll up or anything like that. They're designed to do exactly what I'm doing here. So even though they're, they're tacky and like this is a little tacky right here, you know, I can push on it and not create the, the big holes and stuff in it that you, you get if you try to do that with a lot of other types of acrylics. So not all acrylics work for these types of things. Um, you know, I get a lot of questions all the time. Can I do it with oils? Can I do it with different acrylics and everything? You can cert some of the techniques I can't, you can do. A lot of them you can't because I, I'm an artist who uses only heritage multimedia paint, okay? So everything that I design and things that I paint and I teach and do everything with are designed specifically for that type and brand of acrylic. That's what I use. That's what I do. That, I used to be an oil painter. I used to paint with multiple brands of acrylics. And all I did was confuse my students and get into a whole bunch of trouble when I did one thing with one brand and then it doesn't work with another. So I narrowed down and I only paint with one thing now. And it's what I use for everything. So you can see I get this movement. That's what I like to have. So let's put a little bit of that movement over here into this other one here okay and so I'm going to put it I'm going to start again right out here now this is dry okay I'm going to start with that kind of, I'm going to lift the pressure up here and just lightly skip around a bit I like the kind of movement that adds and then I'll push I'll push some of that rounding movement and some of that around until I get the colors I like let's add a little bit of that cool color right down here and again, I designed to push, so I'm just going to push that right into place here. And I like this kind of movement that I get here. If I don't do it too many times, that's what I like, is that type of movement. And I just watch it to make sure I get the kind of movement that I might want to have, okay? And, um, you, know, I, you know, an extender. I'll use extender here, especially in a stroke piece. I'll use extender within the brush, not to, so I can blend it, because I really like it to dry. I like to paint on dry. Uh, I use it so that it makes the paint slide when I'm stroking a little bit. It does make the paint wet, so you see this just stays wet here. But, um, and whereas other things I used have already started to dry. But uh, that's, the drying of the paint is not as important to the technique as I like it to slide. So I'm just going to have it out there just in case I want to use it. I'm going to put a little warmer yellow up here. Let's build this yellow and let's just push that around. Let's build the yellow a couple of times. This is going to be a white flower, but I'm going to underpaint it here with some of the yellow. Maybe a little of that yellow. I like yellow oxide. Let's brighten it up with a little bit of the Hansa and push a little bit of that in there on that side. Then we'll be ready. We'll come right over here, pick up a dollop of our white. We'll be ready to come over here and paint the white uh, one of our Valdris flowers. I'm just gonna take the brush. I have it pretty loaded pretty well. I'm gonna make the strike across the front of the rose here. Lean. I'm gonna lean the brush over onto its side here that's up by the top so I get a nice clean edge to the top. For the stroke flowers, I like that nice clean edge. Now I might just go ahead and push that right like that to go ahead and see what it does is it incorporates, it pushes it down so I have room for another petal to go ahead and come on here with another petal if I want to put another petal right in there like that and pull down just a bit there like that. I'm going to wipe that brush for a second. I want this color to go a bit more white. I can even put a little bit of my gray in here so the color is softer. I want it to start moving away from the yellow and back to my grays here. So I'll put some of that. I'm going to put just a bit of water into it. You could use extender too, but I want this to dry so I don't want to extend too many times. Now you can see I'm kind of heavy to one side here. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll put on the, the skirt of the, the outside reaching petals, pulling in, stopping right by the bowl. So I'll imagine right where that bowl is, and I'll stop right there, okay? Now what I'll do is I'll just push in and out just a little bit like that, because that's what this paint's designed to do, is to do just that. I'm going to push it. That incorporates it in 
I'll pick up a little more paint, maybe a little bit more gray. Let's pull this angle of this petal right in here. Stop at that bowl, lean right over. So I'm turning the brush, the filbert, painting up on top of the filbert and turning it over onto its chisel there. Stopping it right in there. And then I'll push it right into the bowl shape right there. Push and pull that right there. Just a little bit. You could also use a soft brush full of water to make it softer. I'll show you that in a second. Um, let me get, add a little more gray so I'm a little darker and softer. And let's just go ahead and add some petals, just some quick little ones like that, right along the back, and just pull them down, just so they're nice and they're a little bit lost there, really. Let's pick up some more light. Let's build a, a lighter front to the rose here. We'll turn it away from its yellow, more into its white, and I'll curve this down a bit here. Now what I want to do is just find that bowl again. I'm just going to pull that color down and around and find the bowl of that rose down like that. So I've built it up a bit more. These are strokes, so I try to paint the, the petals here with one or two strokes. And then I'll incorporate a bit or I'll push or something like that. But I don't paint the, the rose too many times. Let's put just a touch of extender in here just to uh, not to blend because I'm not blending I'm only stroking a couple times when I put it on here so that I can slide get a little bit more transparency and sliding of the brush through like that so I'll set another petal here let's set another petal right up here like this stopping right at the bowl it's a little bit lighter and I'm just going to push right up through there so I can see where that bowl is, like that. Now the other way to do it, that I tell a lot of my students, is rinse your brush out so it's clean. And with just a clean brush of water, just pull it right down like this. And you can see how just the water will move, the, the water will move the paint like this for about 30 minutes or so, sometimes an hour, depending on how you have based it in. But it'll help move, it'll look just like it's blended and all you're using is water. So if I want to pull this in, I'll use very light pressure, and this is what the fusion brush is designed. It's very soft, so I can just lay it right on the top here like this and pull it down, and now you look like you've got this real blended little flower there, and we haven't done that much. Let's bring this petal in, so I use what we call the petal edging technique. This is something I teach you on the, uh, on the, on the online classes. I edge the brush corner of the brush with a light color. I lean over to the edge and it's just like drawing the petal in like that. That helps you draw the the petal of the rose and I can leave little marks like that to um, get a better look you know to the rose. So when you see you know petals something like this and something like this or that one that's right there you know that that's that uh, petal edging technique there. So then I'm going to darken this color down, maybe cool it a little bit. Let's add a little bit of our violets here to this gray. Because as I come around the corner here, we can go a bit lighter than that. I'm just going to quickly state in some petals. And in Valdris, they would paint all of the petals kind of perfectly. But I go more contemporary here. I'm going to let it just fade away. And... This is really dry here. Let me show you. It's, it's very dry over there, but I could use that water. I could use that water technique in here. See how it's moving? See how it moves the color? And I could actually physically blend this if I wanted to work that a little bit, but I don't want to do that, that too much. I like to do what I call restate the color. Restate a color, work a gray through it again. I'm a tone painter as opposed to a blender. So I like to work a tone as opposed to blending. So I'll work that cool color in there, find the bowl. I kind of like that, right in there like that. I like movement into it. Let's um, pick up a little bit more light color, maybe a bit of our warm on our brush at the same time here, so we can transition. We'll stroke this way, pull in, stopping at that bowl. Let's pull in, stop at the bowl, and notice how I don't reload my brush too many times when I'm on the shadow side here because I want these petals to soften out. So I'll push just a little bit of those there. Let's pick up a bit more light. Maybe a bit of the bit of the cool color here into that. 
which is really kind of nice. Let's edge this one again right in here like this and pull it right down by the bowl. Let's put a little more light and I'll just put a little bit more of a stroke right in here into this one. I can put another petal across the front of that, which I probably will. And uh, we'll pull in like that. Let's pull some um, lighter color right across the front here. Let's just pull that in. And what I got to do is I don't want to lose my bowl. So I might even, I can use my finger like that and push my finger to get that beautiful color. Or I can rinse my brush out, use the soft characteristic of the fusion and just drop that in just like that to make that, get that beautiful, look at that beautiful modeling that you get in there right now. And it looks just like you've painted it in oils. And that's just, this is what the, or the, the Heritage Acrylic is designed to do. Now I'll just drop in just maybe another little small one right there. I want to bring back that shadow again right there. So I'm just going to wipe my brush with a, a little bit of water and lift off just a touch of that light. And I'll get that nice soft, soft shadowing down there at the bottom. Let's put a bit of our cool color and our light. Let's put a smaller we'll build a little more light here right up in the front let's build this a little bit more white right up in the front so i'll just lift off right there like that lift off right before that leaving that light let's push this petal over just a touch more here and again if i want to soften that right there rinse my brush out for a second so if, and just pinch wipe it so there's hardly any moisture in it and just go right over that and see I'll soften that right like right that to move that color and soften it. That's really kind of a pretty roast. Let's get some cooler gray and we'll uh, close up this side of the rose a bit here. Let's uh, drop a little bit more light color right into that. Just, just pull down. All I want to do is just create the movement on this side of, of that particular petal here. And uh, so it's this kind of a pretty little rose. Let's build a little bit more light right onto the front of that petal right there. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Now see, I can I can roll the brush over right onto its chisel and draw that down and leave that that look of a petal there. I can, you know, rinse my brush real quick. Let's just give it a quick little rinse there and pull down. And you'll see that I get a little different look there. Let's take some of the darker lights. Let me show you this. This is just one of about seven different ways I use on the Valdris flowers. But let's drop a little more light around like this. We'll almost fill up the center here like that. And I'm looking for movement. I'm looking for movement in there. Now in doing so, I'll go ahead and I'll lose some of my shadow, which I'll then just restate. I'll just come back in here and restate while that's nice and soft, lift up that shadow, and let's just pull that down this side just a bit like that. And so I get a different look to that particular rose that way. And it makes kind of a pretty, kind of a fun, uh, pretty little rose. Um, I can decide here, maybe I will put a light stroke pulling down slightly, and that, that helps that feeling of that rose that way. Or I will slide over, almost like the petal edging technique here, and change that from pulling across to pulling in slightly. Just pull in just a little bit and lift off. And I totally change the entire look of that particular rose. I can uh, re reset an edge here with that lighter gray that's kind of pretty. Maybe one or two little strokes here, just for movement. See, I paint for movement. And that's that just really kind of softens that whole rose. So you have a nice little Valdris rose. Now I can revisit that and um, and make that, you know, more uh, more color or something like that. Or if I want to restate the bottom of the bowl here just a bit, if I like that softer look, I can pull that down through. I can incorporate those two movements there and just put in a little more shadow. There's a hundred ways that you can do it. 
hundred ways that you can do it, okay? And, and uh, you know, each colors and different color progressions and stuff look different. I do like that little bit of yellow on there. That's going to carry and track up this other yellow one really nice. So let's um, maybe put just a bit more little touches, what I call this the, the, the brush marks of yellow. Let's put some of those on there like that. And that works, uh, that works really well. And uh, we'll maybe edge just like this. So now you have a nice, pretty, that's a, just one way. We'll go do the yellow one here uh, just a little bit different, okay? So I hope you, hope you enjoyed. There's a nice little example of what, um, you know, Valder's flowers look like, okay? And, you know, some of the contemporary works. That's just a very small sample of it. If you want to, you know, learn with, uh, with a bunch of other really nice people, come on over to our Jansen Art. The links are down below me here. Come on over to our Jansen Art um jansenart.com jansenartonline.com that's our online classes we can have there's all kinds of things from landscapes to animals to airplanes and we just finished a, a big beaver float plane up there i just finished a large ship uh, ship painting there's a lot of different things come on over there and join us in our online classes and uh, once you sign up for an online class you're there for a lifetime so I hope to, to see you over there. And uh, for this particular piece, I'll finish this particular piece off and we'll put it up in our other little place we call Art Videos Direct. It's a monthly subscription and you can watch almost 300 videos there for, uh, I think it's like $9.95 a month. And so come on over and see that, okay? Thanks very much. And I'll look forward to seeing you in some of the uh, online classes. And our forum, we have a forum with... Uh, almost 800 people on it right now that are, are learning and teaching and stuff. So I'll see you over there, okay?